My name's Corey Pollard. I got to tell a show here the last time, and it, it, I love this room. I love musicians. I tried to be one. I play found instrumentation. I bang on shit. I found out that's what the term it was. I was a percussionist, and I didn't know it. A friend of mine started a band with me. It started literally with me not being able to tune a guitar. I can noodle, but I couldn't tune without a tuner. And I asked him to tune it. He played a few tunes, and I started playing percussion with him. He said, we should start a band. Cut to, we played a lot of really fun gigs, and at my place was one of the places we got invited to play. And when Dave brought that up, I hadn't thought of it in literally 30 years. And the first time that we went, part of my shtick was playing Arrowhead water bottles or oh. jars with glass beads in them, refrigerator shelves. I would tape, uh, I had a blues bottle that had a washboard on the front and a tambourine on the bottom. So unbeknownst to the folks at my place, I was bringing all this crap to the stage. So the first time that we played, they went, oh my God, we had no idea you played found instrumentation. I'm like, what? I didn't even know what the term was. <laughs> like, okay. He goes, well, we can't, we can't mic you tonight. So we're, we're embarrassed. We'll do the best we can. I'm like, I've never had a mic. I play in coffee shops and places like this. I like, okay. So they apologized, apologized. And then they gave us another date three weeks later. And when I walked in for that gig, I had invited my mom, because now it was getting a big deal. My mom and my grandmother flew down from Oregon, where I'm from. And they're sitting in the audience. And I go to the sound check. And they have a cage of mics for me that, OK, you're going to play this one and this, and you're going to play this one and that. I'm like, oh my god, this is the big time. Our band was playing. We were a trio. We were kind of an indie vibe before indie had hit Los Angeles. This was 1991. And it was just a guitarist, a vocalist, and this guy banging shit in the corner. <laughs> and it was going well. People showed up for our shows. And our vocalist, Shana, was an improv genius. She taught improv. And so there was a point where we'd just play a standard blues thing. Bow, 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 bow. And she'd say, someone give me the title of a blues song. <laughs> and someone, before they would finish the sentence, she would start singing an entire song. And it was really fun. People liked to try to stump her. We were called The Gathering. This particular night, something happened in that room. And if you've been on stage, you've had those nights where there's just not, it's dead silent in between songs. And it's so awkward, you're like, are they fucking vibing on this? Or is this the worst thing? And I'm getting all caught in my head, well, they hate my percussion, this is awful. Two drunk guys wander in, in the middle of the show. My grandmother and my mother are sitting in the audience, and they're just blah, 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 talking. And someone yells, shut the fuck up, we're listening to the band. And we all stood on the stage and went, whoa. My grandmother about had a heart attack, because it looked like there was going to be a brawl. And I'm grateful that Dave said that, because I hadn't thought of that in literally 30 years. It was one of the greatest nights. Well, our final gig of all gigs was at the Roxy. And we were a, <laughs> an indie band playing in between all these rock bands. It was the worst bill ever, but we played this at the Roxy. So thank you so much, Marina, for letting me share that.